special edition of Supermicro's Tech Talk series. Um, my name is Peter Rutten, and I'm IDC's global research lead on performance intensive computing solutions and use cases, and that includes uh, big data analytics, HPC, and AI. Um, I'm very happy to be joined by Mike Scriber, uh, Senior Director, Server Solution Management at Supermicro, to discuss innovations in high performance storage solutions in HPC. Hi, Mike. Hi, Peter. How are you doing today? Doing well. Good, good. It's great being here. Um, so let's talk about um, some of the hardware innovations that, uh, that we're seeing in HPC storage. I think you're the right person to uh, talk about that. Thanks for having me. Yes, we've got a number of different hardware things that are, that are really innovations that are happening, not only in HPC, but really in the entire industry. One of those being EDSFF which is the enterprise data center small form factor. And we call it a small form factor because it really is very small. We have one right here. This is, this is what we call an E1.S. This is the short version of an EDSFF drive. Right here is, is a long version. You can see much different. So a lot less capacity in this one versus versus the long, but you can get a lot of, of capacity in here. But what makes these really great is, is how the air flows past it. That's the big key. Normally, with a U.2, you have this thing called a backplane, and that backplane sits right across the server, and it blocks the airflow. And so if you ever design one of those backplanes, what you have to do is you cut as many holes as you possibly can in that backplane to try to get as much airflow back to your, your CPUs, your memory, where all that hot stuff is. What they did with EDSFF is they took that backplane and they dropped it down flat. And by doing that, you can plug in the drive and there's nothing blocking the airflow. So you get airflow right through, right back, to the CPUs, back to the memory, back to all of that hot stuff. So that's what's so great about this is the cooling capability of this drive. Very different looking than your U.2, but really it's that connector and how that works that causes the cooling to be fantastic. So that's, that's EDSFF. The other thing that we're seeing along with EDSF, 30 terabytes, right? 30 terabytes you can put in this drive. We're also getting 30 terabyte drives in U.2 for NVMe drives. And with 30 terabytes, imagine I've got a system here that has 32 drives. Well, with 30 terabytes, we're finally able to now say a petabyte in a 1U. So a petabyte of flash in a 1U space. What used to take racks and racks and racks of space to put hard drives to get a petabyte, I can now do in a one U space. So now when I'm talking to HPC customers that say, I want 150 or, or 200 petabytes of, of flash. Well, normally that would take up an entire room. Well, now I can do all of that in a very, very small, small space. And space is the key, right? Because the data center, all of that, that space for racks, that is prime real estate. That, that's expensive stuff. So if I can reduce the number of racks, reduce the number of systems, and still have all of that storage, that's just a fantastic thing. So 30 terabytes we're seeing in NVMe, and 18 terabytes is pretty standard now um, for a high capacity drive for hard drives. But that's growing, and that's going to keep going beyond uh, the 18 terabytes. So that's the second thing. The third thing that we're really seeing, especially this year, is going from PCIe Gen 3 to PCIe Gen 4. And what that does is it doubles the amount of bandwidth. So now these drives, the flash, the flash is fast enough. It's, it's not the bottleneck. The bottleneck is the interface. And at PCIe Gen 3, that was a slower bottleneck than PCIe Gen 4. But now we're even talking about potentially PCIe Gen 5 coming real soon. So you double the bandwidth again. So that's another thing that has really changed um, the, the face of hardware um, in this year. Yeah. Wow. Uh, a petabyte in one U. I, I just sort of have to wrap my head around that. But um, that's very <laughs> that's cool. Amazing. That's cool. Um, so um, talk a little bit more about the software innovations that, that you're seeing in HPC storage. Well, 
you know, software and hardware, they usually kind of line up. So now we've got NVMe drives. Now we've got really, really cool, no kidding, better thermal NVMe drives, right? And so pair that up now with software. One of the problems we had with software, with software-defined storage, like the original versions of Ceph and Lustre, is they were designed for hard drives. So they were designed for those slow, long latency hard drives. Well, you put in an NVMe drive, and honestly, it doesn't work that well. It really doesn't take advantage of the NVMe. So what we're finally seeing now is software-defined storage being rewritten or brand new software-defined storage being developed for NVMe drives that have much better performance, fantastic performance, just amazing performance. So that has been really good to see because you know, people, you've got to have software to drive all of this, and if you have software that's designed for a hardware, for, for a hardware that's a hard drive, that just doesn't really work. So the other thing that's really happening in the industry, we've had NVMe over fabric, which allows you to disaggregate your storage, it allows you to have your storage separated from your compute, and, and that's a great idea, but you've got to deal with latencies. NVMe over fabric solves that latency problem and allows you to have disaggregated storage. And it's been around for a few years, but now it's finally starting to be adopted. Customers are finally saying, hey, I, I'm, I'm willing to do this. And, and there's a lot more software solutions that use it. Back in the, when it first came out, it's like, okay, this is great, but there's no real software to make it happen. Now there really is. So that's the other thing that's happening uh, in the industry that's really doing a fantastic job of, of using NVMe the way it should and then the last thing I want to talk about in the way of software, GPUs are really picking up. But one of the things about a GPU is you need an enormous amount of data for GPU. And to feed that beast, right, of the GPU, you can do it with an NVMe drive, but one of the things that we're finding is the standard way that that happens is the data comes from the drive, the CPU grabs the data, puts it in memory, and then it takes it out of memory and sends it to the GPU. Well, that's kind of slow and cumbersome. I mean, it uses up your CPU. Well, who wants to do that? So there's a new thing called GDS, GPU Direct Storage. And what that does is it allows you to go directly from that drive right to the GPU, skipping the memory, skipping the CPU which frees up your CPU to be running your applications instead of doing kind of tedious things of just taking data, storing data, sending data, right? You don't want your CPU to be a data mover. You want your CPU to run your applications. So that's a really, really great uh, new innovation that not only works with drives, it also works with networks. So I can have a network. So let's say I'm streaming in some data in a network uh, on a network card. I can go directly from that network card directly down to the GPU, skipping my CPU. So that's what GDS does. It's really fantastic. Yeah, very interesting. And um, and you're right. We're seeing we're seeing uh, more and more technologies that are uh, bypassing the CPU really to uh, improve performance. Um, you you just talked about the literal connections between storage interfaces and and GPUs. Um, what is the functional connection between those uh, technologies? Uh, would you say? Yet when it comes to the GPU, you really need to feed that GPU. And so one of the things that we have done in our GPU systems, one of the things that we do really well, I think, at Supermicro is we have GPU design systems. We don't just take a server and slap a GPU in it. We design the GPU system to be a GPU system. So we are pairing up multiple NVMe drives onto, onto GPUs also multiple networks to a GPU. So you don't just have a drive that's feeding a bunch of GPUs or a network card that's feeding a bunch of GPUs. You, you line it up and associate drives and NIC cards per GPU. So you have multiples of those. And that way you can do an excellent job of getting the data into the GPU so that you can run these big, big data sets that we have today. Right. Can you tell us a little bit more about the systems you have there? Oh, this one? Oh, this is an yeah. awesome system. This is our 1U32 um, drive. This is, this is our, our E1.S system. So it's got the E1.S drives in it that I showed you earlier. We have a little bit, we have one that's a little longer. Basically, if you can imagine, something that, that extends out, I think it's another seven more inches to, to handle these longer drives. 
But the great thing about this, it has, it has full DIMMs, all of the DIMMs that, that you can have in the System 24 in this case, dual processors, and you have uh, two PCIe slots out the back so you can get great bandwidth out the back, and then you have all of these drives that you can run directly to, which gives you great capacity and, and great utilization and a huge density play for, uh, for EDSFF. We also have these in a U.2 version that also does 32 drives, which is pretty amazing. So you uh, interact a lot with your customers. Um, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about the types of customers that are using uh, Supermicro storage systems for HPC applications today. And maybe oh, also g give me a feeling of why they uh, pick um, Supermicro. Well, one of the things about Supermicro is we have a wide variety of different systems. Um, one customer comes to mind. They, they used our systems, they used our, our what we call our SBB, an NVMe SBB system. It's a storage bridge bay. And basically what it has is it has two nodes, two servers that can access all of the drives, 24 drives, NVMe drives. So if one server dies, you've got another one right there. Not that that happens very often, but if it does, you've got a high availability solution. They took that, and then they took our high availability solution of JBODs connected to that. And what they were able to do is, depending on the different applications, have different kinds of configurations using those, those building blocks and those systems to do different things of what they need for storage. And this customer in particular has come up with, I think we're on 14 different configurations that they've ordered so far. And, and each one of is different. Each one is unique to the application that they need. So it's a great approach that you can use uh, systems that become a standard system for them, but use them in different ways, configure them in different ways to accomplish the applications that you want to have. Huh. So, you, so I heard you mention the building blocks. So um, can you expand a little bit on that, on, on Supermicro's building block uh, approach? Supermicro, if you go back to the basics of Supermicro, all the way back to what, 28 years ago, I think it was, um, we started building motherboards. We were a motherboard company. And fascinating, some people still see us as a motherboard company. And we still do, we obviously, design motherboards. But we've grown from that into designing the chassis, the power supplies, the complete servers, and gone from servers to racking up servers into a full rack integration solution and going from there to adding the software to having a complete solution. So we've really grown. But as we did that, we realized that if you design it in that mentality, you realize that I want to design motherboards that can go into multiple chassis or I want to design riser cards that can be used on multiple motherboards. So we have this building block approach where lots of different motherboards can use all these risers and I can design it in such a way that I can mix and match and mix and match depending on what I'm trying to accomplish so that I can come up with the optimal solution for what that customer is looking for. He may say, well, well, I don't need all of this, but I need more of that. Okay, we can do that by taking these building blocks, putting them together in different configurations to come up with the perfect solution for the customer. Okay, great, yeah, that's a lot of flexibility. Um, very cool. Um, so, Mike, thank you for uh, joining this Tech Talk uh, to talk to us about uh, innovations in high-performance storage and, uh, and, and sharing some of the systems you have there with us. Um, is there anything that I haven't asked that you uh, think uh, we might still want to talk about? Well, another system that I didn't point out, that I should have pointed out earlier, we have a system back here called the Big Twin. That's been a really, really popular system for software-defined storage. And the reason why is because it's got four nodes. In just a 2U space, you fit four nodes, and each node has six drives. So people, customers that are concerned about blast radius, that's a great solution, and it's a very balanced solution for the drives going out to the network. So that's, that's a great one for software-defined storage that a lot, of, a lot of those customers like to use. The other thing I'd like to tell you, just kind of, personally about Supermicro and why it's so fun to work at Supermicro. And that is that Supermicro loves to be on the cutting edge. They love to, to, to be the first to market with new technologies. I mean, six, seven years ago, we started putting NVMe drives in our systems back 
when NVMe drives were never really even heard of. And yet we did that because we saw what NVMe was going to be, and so we started doing that. It's one of the funnest things about working here is because you get to work on and get to design the latest and greatest in technology, cutting edge stuff, and that's just fun. Yeah, I can tell from the way you're talking about this, Mike. Thank you so much. This was really great. Well, thank you, Peter. Gosh, it was great talking to you. You have an awesome day. Thank you. You too. Learn more at www.supermicro.com forward slash HPC featuring third gen Intel Xeon scalable processors.